Hier hat Zabach dem Kuvet aufzurufen, dem Balsimche, Rabbi Avram Schulem, und ich will vor allem nicht beten, dass es ich rede nur in Jiddisch, am Ula Wort in Englisch, aber ich habe bekommen a Request von der Balsimche, Mrs. Klein, soll gebeten, ich soll in ein paar Wörter in Englisch beten, alle Kuschebe Frauen, wo sind Joy in der Simche, so gebeten, ich soll es sagen in Englisch. I have a special request to convey to the Kusche of women from our host, Mrs. Klein. And the men. We know it's not the most comfortable thing to listen to a speech from behind the Mechitze. But in honor of our dear friend of Remy, we ask everyone to kindly remain quiet during his speech. I'm sure you'll all be inspired. Now, without further ado, I present to you our dear and beloved friend, the Groise Bal Simcha of Remy Klein. My dear parents and all gathered here today. I would begin with an apology to those that might be bothered by it, but for the sake of inclusion, I thought that it would be proper that I speak in English so everyone here would understand, especially that it would be easier for the ladies to follow. Before I continue, I want to give a big yashikoyer to the entire Lulian family from California. Our dear cousin Yomi Katz from Yerushalayim. And Bricha Mabuam, Sarav, the Baden Halpen from Beit Shemesh. All of who came from afar, especially for this momentous occasion. For the Baden, all of us are going to come from Vat to the hand to get away with the moment. When advised that I'll need to speak at today's event, Valsapastazoi, I was struggling with a tsunami of opposing emotional feelings. Being that this event for the Chnusa Tzai Vatoy Lilinishmas Malki, I was sure, I wasn't sure, am I supposed to be speaking about Malki or about the Simcha of Chnusa Tzai Vatoy? Maybe about both. But how do those two converge? One being a Simcha after all, while the other being the commemoration, Yudzat, of a tragedy. There was once this aspiring chazan doing his thing on Shabbos, auditioning in the shul for the upcoming Yom Nadur. After davening, the shamas of the shul said to the chazan that he was totally unimpressed by his performance. The chazan, being upset, repeated it, to, repeated it to his wife the moment he came home from shul, adding, how dare you tell me something like this? His wife's response was, don't be bothered by what the shaman said. He doesn't know anything about chazunas. He's just repeating what everyone else in shul is saying. <laughs> On this note, before going forward, I would like to make a little disclaimer of my own. By no means should anything I will be saying be construed as me delivering divrei techocha or edocha in any shape or form, as that is absolutely not my intent, nor do I feel qualified to do so. What I will, however, try to do with is make an honest attempt to clarify and do some sort of con collection, analysis, and reconciliation of some of the things I previously heard from the Rebbe Shlita, the Ruf Shlita, as well as others, as it relates to today's event, to the best of my ability. There are many types of things which people donate to Besmedish or Yeshiva, Lenin a loved one. For example, Sadidim, food and even furniture like an Onakoidish. Yet we see that when one has the ability to do so, they would make every effort to commission for a Saifatoy to be written Lil Nishmas at Love One. That's besides an addition to the mitzvah Kasiva Saifatoy, seemingly, at least in our minds, it's the ultimate honor one feels they can do for the Nishama. But why? In the Shiva week, during one of the Devish Lita's visits, he told me that he plans to be commissioning the writing of a Seifat Oil in Lil Nishmas Malki that he intends for the Schulis Kasivas Oisius 
to be as early as the Sunday after Shiva and hopes for the completion and Achnusa Saifa Toida to be right around the Yudzat. He gave me two reasons for doing so. One being a spiritual one, explaining in the name of his father, the Spin Kedabuzacha and the that writing a Saifa Toida in Lil Nishma is someone that passed away without leaving future generations, making Bechas Toida on it, lining in it is in the same Bechina as learning the Vratoid and the Saifa published by Atam Chochem that passed on, and therefore, Sif Soislav Davos Bakaivin. I listened, I heard. Having difficulty to comprehend the connection, I looked up the source where in Mesechtas Bechoides it states, Doma Dabirachin Meshim Meshim Bayechui. Because the Berkhan has said in the name of the B'Shem and the any deceased Tamad Chucham in whose name a teaching is quoted, in this world his lips move in the grave. The Rishalmi brings this concept of Sif Soysav Davavas as support for a request that Dovod HaMelech makes in Tehillim Kapitel Zamachalov. The Shalmi there asks, Did it also adata shal dovet shehachai v'kaim lalumem? Did it enter dovet amelech's mind that he would be li- he would be living forever? El kachol madovet of naikud shbarchi the boy nishloilam eske sheir dovet and amud and bute can see his avut and medushes vayhai sefusi dovet v'kaiven. May I merit that my teaching will be quoted in the houses of study and worship, so that my lips may move in the grave. The Ein Yankov there explains. We know that Chazal tell us in Eidav and Kuvbais that Hayoim Lasoisam and Muchalit Nishchudam Veloy Lamuchal Asoisam. Today is for when we work. Today is for when we work. It is to be is for when the work is to be done, as opposed to tomorrow. And tomorrow, in other words, thereafter, is for reward. And so, how can David Amelach expect to get schad on work that is that is being done tomorrow, meaning after he was already nifted? Nonetheless. He says, When his teachings are repeated after his passing, it is as though he comes back to life on this world, and therefore he receives chad like when he was alive. Yet I struggle to understand the relevance here. Maybe if Malki would have been the one to commission the writing of the Sefer Torah, it would have been her effort, which according to the Shah Ghazali, the mitzvah of Ksiva Sefer Torah applies to women as well, because it's not one of the mitzvahs Shazman Gedama. And so when reading in it, one might see the equivalence. But even that is not the case here. So I continue to ponder. Is it the mere reading the words of Hashem and the Nishmas and the Shema? But we commonly perform many similar tasks of reciting Hashem's words. We learn Toida, Davin, Seitilam, Ler Mishnayas, or other holy spiritual tasks like giving tzedakah and the like all of which has a chusam for the liyas neshama. So why this huge effort and significance of writing a Sefer Torah? Is it maybe because the Sefer Torah itself is on a higher level of Kedusha? Therefore, reading the words of Hashem within the Sefer Torah and the Nishmas and Neshama is like a booster shot, sechisam on steroids, perhaps? Or conceivably, it's more symbolic. Traditionally, we put tremendous emphasis on symbolism, simunam, simunam nadoidus. Why? Because as a Vus of Adam, earthlings, we constantly need earthly, relatable reminders for our spiritual responsibilities. For example, a Paisach Saida is loaded with symbolism, Simunam, the kittle to remind us of our mortality, salt water as a commemoration to the Yiddish Shatirs, Chadoisis, a commemoration of the cement, and the list goes on. It's very much at the core of our Masoida, it has kept us propped up, guided us, and propelled us within the proper trajectory for all these years in Gullis, and will continue to do so until the coming of Mashiach. And if so, what can possibly be the symbolism, the similar doidus here in this case? So as to better understand this all, we need to first explore what it is that makes a Saifatoy the holier, and when does it become so holy? Is it the materials itself, like the Gevillen? Can be, for the most part, it's made from a cow. Notwithstanding the common phrase, holy cow, that simply wouldn't do it. The ink 
Nah, it's just natural materials. The quill, here we go again, comes from a goose or a turkey. The shyness or the completeness of the text itself, chamushim, contain the same text as the shyness. Maybe it's the, totality, it's the totality of all items put together. And if so, the chalois of the holiness what would come only upon the completion of the writing, which we did today. Seemingly, that is why everybody wants to take part in writing an us for the completion. And yet we find in Gitten Daf Mem Hai, where it states, Umar ibn Nachman, Naktinan, Saifatoyde Shakos Femin, a Saifatoyde that was written by an erratic, Yisudaif, is to be burnt. Rashi says, Davada Lashem Avoidus Kachuvim Kosvi. So although the Saifatoyde is mechanically perfect, it has all the proper materials, Ksav, Shaimis, contains the full text, Lamaset carries absolutely no Kedusha at all. Because we are sure beyond any doubt, that it was written with negative intent. The Dambam in Hilchas Yisad HaToyda doesn't find the need to go, uh, to go with the Vadai, but simply says, Because the heretic doesn't believe in Hashem and Kedusha Hashem, thus it didn't proactively write it with a proper positive intent. Consequently, the written Shimus never took on any holiness at all. Therefore, we burn it so that people won't mistakenly read in something that has absolutely no cipher value. Accordingly, we can conclude that Kedusha cipher is all hinged on intent and purpose. Intent being to be Mekayim the mitzvah of Atta Kisru Lechem Hashiru Azois, and purpose being as the Pusa continues, so that the word of Hashem will continue being embedded within the B'nai Yisrael at Tzav Kaladoides. So our mitzvah of Ksiva Saifatoida, which is learned from this Puzik, is in essence to replicate the Saifatoida of Moshe Rabbeini, not only in form and substance, but also in intent and purpose. Just as Moshe Rabbeini received his Saifatoida, while being in Shemayim for 40 days, Bebechinus Malach, word for word from Hashem, for the purpose of passing it on to Claudius soul forever, so too we continue to write Sifra Toida for the intent and purpose to pass on to B'nai soul forever. This could be shot in the Gemura, Mesechtas Menuchas, Daf Lamad, which states, Be'umad Abishia, Barabba, Umad Abigidl, Umadav, Halakayach Saifra Toida, Menashik, Kechoit of Mitzvah, Menashik. Kosvi, Ma'alov Lakusev, Ke'ili Kibli Mahal Sinai. One who writes a Saifatoid is considered as if he has received it at Hal Sinai, literally. We can summarize that a Saifatoid is not just there, a thing to simply be revered, but has a specific purpose, a mission. And from the moment we start writing the Shem Mitzvah's Kasiva Saifatoid, it's on a trajectory to fulfill its mission. This is all true for a Saifatoid. But how does this connect to a person, to the Nefteris, to Malki in particular? I once heard in the name of the Chadish Arim a beautiful explanation on the Pusik in Mishla Shema Bani Misar Avichu Ve'al Titeshtoide Samechu. Question being, firstly, a woman is not Mechiev in teaching their children Toida. And second, the Pusik seems to be making a distinct difference in language when referring to the father with Shema Bani Misar Avichu as in, in the present, commanding to listen, as happening now. However, uses a phrase, don't change. Change is something you do to something you already know from the past. He explains that the Torah Samechu is not necessarily referring to the Torah that the mother herself would be teaching, but rather refers to the Torah that every Yiddish child is taught by a Malach Alakim while in the mother's womb as stated in Masech Tesnida Daf Lamed. And the Noyim al explains that even though this prenatal Torah learning is then forgotten from our conscious mind before being born, nonetheless it's necessary because she'im lo hoi malam dama Torah koidam shibu ila oilam lo hoi hoi be'af shuri lahasega Torah. Basically, the Torah learned stays embedded deep with our subconscious archival system, heart, mind, and neshama, and is the primer, the core, which allows us to properly learn, understand, and recognize its truth 
the Torah teaching, its morals, values, and logic. It's our built-in compass, and this is for boys and girls alike. Accordingly, every single Yiddish child born is a Kudosh Malachim Imoy. After all, the child just spent nine months in Yeshiva Torah Semechu with the most amazing accommodations, miraculous sustenance delivered to them without worries, and to boot, had a Malach Alakim as a personal tutor teaching them Kala Torah Tequila one-on-one. Pretty much the same treatment and similar arrangement as Moshe Levine had, with the same intent and for the same purpose, so as to learn Torah, teach Torah either physically or through example to future generations. It's just that Moshe did it in 40 days, as opposed to nine months, having Hashem himself as his personal chavrusa. Accordingly, we can conclude that without Torah Samechu as the core and foundation, the Misa Revichu cannot even begin. So we can summarize that the person and the Sushama on this earth was also created with a specific purpose and mission, and from the moment of conception was placed on a trajectory strikingly similar, if not 100% identical, to that of a Sefer Torah. We can maybe even dare to make an analogy, a direct correlation, so to speak, between a Sefer Torah and a person, that the body, the gift, represents the villain as the carrier, the Yiddish and the Shema and heart represents the written, the written word, the Oisius, and the Malach is the Seifer, Quill and Ink. Or perhaps the analogy should really be made the other way around. The Gvillen being the body, the gift, the Oisius being the Neshama and heart, and the Seifer, Quill and Ink is the earthly equivalent of a Malach. This analogy is probably not far fetched as based on what the Zoyda Kud, Kudish, which states, the Nefesh Chaim concludes in Shah Dalad, in relevant part, that the sanctity of every Yiddish and Neshama, that is the sanctity of a Saifa Toida. The Nefesh Chaim is not alone in comparing the Kedishas Nishma Shesul to a Saifa Toida. As the Kedishas Live states in Bamidbar, the Hina Hashem is Budach Nusna Toida Yisrael. Since Hashem gave the Torah to the Eden, and the Yiddish and the Shumas, and the, and the Yiddish and the Shuma is the essence of the Torah, as we find there are 600,000 Yiddish and the Shumas against 600,000 letters of the Torah, accordingly, every Yid is a representation, a letter of the Torah. We can even take it a step further and say that a person, a neshama, is on a higher level of Kedusha than a Saifa Toida, as it's stated in Yedadaya Semachayi Daish, in reference to selling a Saifa Toida. And then later continues, because one is not allowed to sell a Duvash of of this degree even as an exchange for another one on the same degree of Kedusha. Yet one is permitted to sell a Duvah Shepa Kedusha for the purpose of getting something on a higher level of Kedusha as it continues. Both of which are for the furtherance of the person and the Shema, which are on a higher level of Kedusha. And the Ramu adds, Vihiyadin l'tzoyduch pidyan shviyah mitil a mitzvah deeply rooted in Vahavtadacha Kamaichu, described by Hillel as being Kalatoyde Kilal Kila Ale Galachas. And the Toyde itself is here for us. It was given to us so that we can acquire all the proper skill sets for the furtherance and growth of ourselves and the Shema. Understanding the significant role of a Saifa Toyda, the reverence thereof is logical. Consequently, our responsibility for its covered and in turn the halachas as it relates to our undertaking in the event of it being disgraced are quite appropriate. A short while ago, I heard the following in a dusha from Rabbi Yosef Yitzchok Y.Y. Jacobson in the name of the Ragut Shavagun. When Chanidim and Tadjin was wrapped in a Saifa Toida and lit on fire, Amlulay Tamidav, Rebbe Mu'atadaya, as the fire raged, Rebbe Chanin said to him, Rebbe, from your vantage point, what do you see? 
Umalahan, Gevilin the Sufim, Voicius Parchas. He answered them, the parchment is burning and the letters are taking flight. The Dagat Shavad explains that this seemingly strange and awkward conversation between the Tamidim and the Rebbe, while being burnt alive, was actually an halachic question. Because the Gemura, Emoid Kutin, states, why? Because while the Saifatoid is fully intact, the Ksav on the Klav, every part carries the full Kedusha. Therefore, the question being, when it's burned, if the Ksav burns off first, consequently turning the Klav into a blank page, one might only need to fast once for the Ksav. Oz the Ksav, Oz the Kedishta. To that, the Bchanina responded with his observation that first, Gevilin is Slufen, and thereafter, Oisius is Parchas, and accordingly, Chayr the Kloyesh Taikrias, because while the Klaf was burning, the Oisius was still on it. So if both the Saifa Toida and the Yiddish and the Shoma created, missionized, and put on this earth for the same purpose in sum and substance, and on the same intended trajectory, that should lead us to the following question. We see even in a less severe case, for example, when a Saifatoida falls, even without any physical damage, although we don't do Kriya, the original Minag is to fast 40 days as a Tikkun. A Tikkun usually follows a rule of Midda Kaneged Midda, meaning that the fix is related conceptually to the transgression. Fasting 40 days helps atone for the dis disrespect shown to the Saifatoida which was given in 40 days. This goes not only for the person who dropped it, but for everyone present, since everyone present sensed their enormous disgrace and degradation. They too would need to fast. So if at a minimum, Kedishas, Nishmas, Kalechet, Miyasu, the Kedishas, Saivatoy, the Mamish, on the same level, why then, when a person tragically passes on, especially a young child, where seemingly their intended trajectory has been prematurely interrupted, don't we as a community fast, or do Kriya? Mm -hmm. And if Yiddish and Neshama is even on a higher level of Kedisha, that begs the question even more. We can make an analogy to Hilchus Availas. We are commanded to mourn 12 months after losing parents, but only 30 days when losing a child. Why? Because we are Mechiev in the mitzvah of Kabbat Esavichu Vesemechu. And mourning the deceased parent is an extension of this mitzvah. Yet, in the same time, Hashem also blessed us with shikha. So, that, so at the right time, one should be able to move on. However, with shikha, shikha coming into play, after a while, one can prematurely lose sight of their obligation of kabbat esavichu esamechu. Hence, the commandment to mourn for 12 months. But with children, it's different. Parents are programmed with unconditional and everlasting love for their children. Just as Hashem has unconditional love for us, his children, so too he created us in his image, built into our DNA, the same love for our children. If so, there is no shikha. The loss of a child is a grief that lasts forever. Therefore, one does not need to be commanded. Perhaps that is why we fast when tragedy befalls a Saifatoida, but not for a human being. By a Saifatoida, we earthlings need to be commanded to mourn, commanded to do the proper tekinim, tekunim, and without being commanded, one might not naturally connect and be self-inspired. But that, as it relates to human tragedy, being on an even higher level, it's expected that we would naturally feel the pain we would be moved by ourselves, self-motivated to mourn the tragedy, inspired to learn from it, and undertake to do related to Kunim for positive change. Hence, as a community, we would not need to be commanded. So what are the Tikkunim here in our case? At the Schulis Kasivis Oisius, the Ruf Shlita was talking about the Schus Godel for the Neshuma when we become the Soida awakened and inspired from such a tragedy. And we learned something. From Malki, we learn that we all have to see Yiddish and Neshama's kids in pain from a proper, broader perspective. We mechazek them, 
look at our kids with wider angled lenses, work on ourselves to understand them better, be makar of them, and do whatever we can to take away their pain, or at least some of it, help minimize it, so as to allow for them to heal, to rise, to where the neshama, by default, truly yearns and strives to go. So how can one keep this side of this inspiration and awakening going, so that it's continuously is chus gadol for the neshama? The masa, the shikha. Maybe not for the parents, but for the general klal there is. People become inspired. It lasts a short while. It then becomes yesterday's news. We go back to everything normal, and it's all good until the next tragedy strikes. The Seyfet Torah being our moral compass, our guide for everything, is once again what we use to remind us every day of our responsibilities. First, by writing a Seyfet Torah, which purpose is so much aligned with that of a Neshama, Kedusha is so much the same, corresponding trajectory, its essence being indistinguishable, thus being the ultimate Dovet Shiva Kedusha, to dedicate Lil Nishma's one that passed, because Kedishas Nishmas, Kedechet Me Yisul, He Kedishas Saifatoy De Mamish, and Zeh Doimah, Lodoya Saifatoy De Shnesav. That, in and of itself, makes it the appropriate Dovet Shiva Kedusha. And then, when using the Saifatoy in the public settings, such as the Shul, it's a constant reminder to stay focused and be nisoyed and inspired time and again. And when continuously inspired through the symbolism, the simon of this Seyfet Torah, written Lil Nishmus Malki Alei Ashulam, constantly internalizing the story of Malki's short life, and followed with substantial tikkunim, mita kaneged mina transformation, that is and will be the schuz gadol for her neshama. And just as kol tamat chokham sha'armim duva shemiyim epiv be'olam azeh sif soisa of davas bekaive, why? Because it inspires us. We learn from it. We change and become better people. All because of the message we get from the duva shemiyim epiv. So to hear. Because the lessons and the tikkunim thereafter is all because, because of this Saifa Torah, Lil Nishmas Malki. This, in essence, is Malkis Yeshiva's Torah Zemechel. That is Malkis Shemim Epiyu. And that is how Sifsa Seyu Davvaz Bekaivet. Additionally, we find a similar Doidas, just as by a Saifa Torah. When a tragedy strikes, we are not given the luxury to point fingers at one another, give excuses, and say we had nothing to do with the tragedy. For example, when one drops a Seyfet Torah, we don't say it's that person's issue. He should, he should have held on tighter. He should have done this or that. Therefore, only he should be the one that needs to fast or be paida, and not us. But rather, it's considered a calamity of the cloud. So too, when Yiddish and Neshama falls, drops through the cracks, it is expected that we all equally feel the pain, equally feel the suffering, equally feel the responsibility, and equally do introspection. I remember that a little while after the Aschulis Kasivas Oisius, as it became known that the Seyfet will be joining the other Seyfet in the Urna Kodesh at Mata Ephraim, the Gabum started discussing the need for a new Urna Kodesh. I was approached and asked if I would consider donating it, Lil Nishmas Malki Le Ashulam. Yumi Hamazik. And some others will probably remember my response when I said, if the shul needs a new one, just say so, but don't give me this little Nishmas thing. As I can Nishmas, I can hear any plaque does that job. But how does a closet, even if it contains and guards if a Consequently, being a Dovah Shevakdusha itself, have an effect on Aliyah's Neshama. I remember Yumi simply replied that this Una Kodesh has no room and we need something larger. I said that's a pra practical request and some of the planning began. Yet I asked, some of the Sifatoida Apostle, why do we need those? Yumi's response that it's you, Semchastoida, was not satisfying enough. I was thinking, is this it? There must be something more to it, because there are some shuls that have kosher sifatoida 
which outnumber them as them, yet they still hold on to and keep the pulseful ones in the Udin. So I decided to research to see if there's any noteworthy reason for what's Mefit Sechazai. And I bumped into something impressionable from the Saifa Chasidim, which says, The Yesh Lechabet Saifa Toide Shenefsel, Ela Nichoi Letzat Saifa Toide Kushel, after Kulish Kedishtai, Kemoi Shemitzini Beshevelichas and Menuchem Be'udin. That we are to honor and respect the Saifa Toide that became Pusel, and that it should be set into Udna Kodesh side by side, along with the Kusha Saifa Toide. All of the Khan Kedusha level of the Pusul Sefer is somewhat diminished by its Pusul status. And he bases this on the Gemurah in Bovabasa, where it says, in relevant part, Malamat, Shalichas, Veshivra Lichas, Menuchem Be'udin. So it dawned on me the significance of the message and the profound lesson to be learned. We don't throw away a Sefer that has a temporary Pusul. We don't even throw away one with a permanent psil. How much more so do we need to be mechabed, a highly Yiddish in the Shema? As a community, we can derive the most profound inspiration from this alone. Inspired to expand our physical, mental, and emotional boundaries. Inspired to open as opposed to closing doors. Inspired to be inclusive as opposed to exclusive inspired to be accepting as opposed to rejecting, inspired to be understanding as opposed to judging. All this, even when with our earthly limited vision, we currently see some Pesil in the person, as both the Luf Shlita and the Rebbe Shlita so eloquently expressed during the Chzchulis Kesivas Isis. We learned this directly from Darke Hashem, and Zoyz Chikas because that, because being that because when did Hashem choose to show us expanded boundaries, unconditional love beyond, inclusion, understanding, acceptance, and yes, an open door policy? It was at a time when we were symptomatic of having a psil, not just a little one, but almost all psil impossible. As a matter of fact, we were in the Memte Shadatima. And that is when Hashem found it to be the most momentous occasion to make the most incredible declaration of Bani B'dachoy Yisrael. We were in such bad shape that even the Malach HaLakim, although not a very friendly one, was not able to tell us apart from the Goyim and questioned Hashem. Still Hashem sent to the, said to the Malach, Shoy Teshe Be'olam, V'chi ledatem avdiyu, V'loi loy avdiyu elam toch shivet im toch tirav das, Hashem called him a shoyta because he judged by symptoms, external perceptions, and it's brought down the Yalkut Shemayni Pashas B'Shalach. Almost a year ago, in response to an article about Malki in Mishpacha, a good friend of mine, Rabbi Vimide Grimfeld, a person I've had the privilege to know for close to 40 years through our mutual Spink affiliation, as someone that has been in Chinuch for over 30 years, 30 years, related a powerful story mm. from the Rebbe of Heschel of Spinker Zechayin Lelocha. Being so much on point, it's worth repeating it here, especially when nobody would ever accuse the Rebbe Zechayin Lelocha of being a modern-day Rebbe with modern-day ideas in Chinuch. The Rebbe Zechayin Lelocha was all about Mesoida, all about what the Uvas did and would do to follow in Darka Hashem. This story was told to the Bavlimida by Herav Leibish Freund Shlita, a prominent Rosh Hashiva, who at one point was considering opening a yeshiva for Metzayunim. He decided to first consult the Rebbe Zechayin Lelocha. After hearing the question, the Rebbe told him, imagine that I invite you and your family for Shabbos, And I tell you to please leave your Moshe at home. You are all very welcome, but your Moshe is a bit too wild for me to host him. Do you know what your answer would be? Rebbe, if you can't have us all, then I can't come. The Rebbe then concluded, if you open the yeshiva only for Metzayunim, Hashem will tell you, you can open your yeshiva, 
but if you can't have all my children, then I'm not coming. Therefore, even furniture, such as the Kodesh, signifying Dalek Hashem at its very core, Donal and Nishmas Malki Shulam, when it inspires such profound lessons, is its Chuz Godel, because in essence, this also becomes Malkis Yeshiva Stadia Samechu. Therefore, is Malkis Shemi Mepiyu, and that as well is a cause for Sister Seyo Davos Bekaibe. On a recent family trip to Tzfas, which is known to inhabit a wide ranging colorful segment of Eden. While visiting various shuls, my Aydan, David, made an interesting observation that the inscription on the Una Kodesh in the shul is sort of a mission statement of that particular shul. For example, one will find in the Karbach shul inscriptions such as Shil Hashem Shechuda, Shil Hashem Kaludetz, or Zamil Kim Zamaydi, Zamil Kaina Zamaydi. In some shuls, you'll find something like while another more Hasidic festival, something like This reflection sparked a proposition I would like to offer to the Gabon and Kehila of Mata Ephraim, and of course only Bashir's Daruf Shlita. We will be as Hashem commit to do the Urna Koidesh, Nalki, however, requesting that it would carry an inscription. Malamat Shalichas, Mashiva Lichas, Menuchim Bud. Almost a year ago, our daughter Aide Techia undertook to do a learning program in camp and in school called Think Kindness, Lil Nishmas, her sister Malki Alea Shulam, whereby she assembled beautiful toilet thoughts and stories, published periodicals to promote the Kunim of Mida Kanegad Mida. As a lead up to one of them, she mentioned in her speech the Taz in Hilchas Availas, where he paskins that exaggeration to some degree during a hespit is allowed, especially in mitzvahs that the person did during their life. Because would the person have been giving more life, they would have done more. And that is also the basis why doing mitzvahs, little nishmas, a person that has passed, is effective in adding to this chism. From the Gedank of the Chedish Harim on Valtit Shaydis Samechu, I got to realize a deeper understanding of the Taz. Because if a person, before they were even born, knew it all, and we can therefore be sure that had they be given more life, would have done it all, although it's not, it's not even an exaggeration. So according to the Taz, we can say here today that Malki wrote a Saifa Torah. Because given the time, giving the money, Malki would have had a Torah written as well. There's another very strong connection between Malki and this Sefer Torah. The Rebbe Shlita quoted from Masechtas Eidavon at the Ksivas Oisius, Hamachzik Menechsa Haged, and would like to hold on to the wealth, Yikach Behen Sefer Torah. He should write a Sefer Torah. And the Mashu says that the reason is to show that he believes that all is from Hashem. So writing this Saifa Torah, which symbolizes Amunah and Hashem, is the perfect simon for Malki. While she was with us, she made the effort to let millions upon millions of people around the world know that she has no question, she has no doubt that everything is from Hashem. By her now famous online posting, God has only three answers. Yes, not right now, I have something better planned for you, Malki. The Torah she learned while in Yeshiva Torah Samechu was deeply embedded and fully intact until her last breath. So if we look at Malki and ask, Mu'a Tadaya, it can bo- truly be answered with Gevil Nislufen through her struggles while she, her body, the earthly carrier of her holy neshama was burning up, literally going through an internal holocaust, her amuna, her belief, her hope, and default yearning to Hashem was deeply embedded and fully intact.
It was only thereafter, along with the last breath, that Oisius Barchus, Her Holiness, and the Shema took flight up to the heavens. It would only be appropriate to include to conclude with a kudas atayv. In this case, expressing a kudas atayv is of special importance, as there's so much of it to be expressed to so many. A kudas atayv to our whole family for being so supportive over the years throughout this journey, especially my chushev parents, mommy, for always making your best effort and showing Malki how special she is especially with, you, with those sentimental gifts and letters. And Tati, for time and again, going out of your comfort zone, you to show her how much she's loved. And now again, with both of you taking such a huge part in the Chnusa Tzayfa by, by adorning the Tzayfa written in the Nishas Malka with a befitting Kesa. With such enthusiasm, devotion, dedication, and love. Know that nothing ever did nothing you ever did went unnoticed by Malki. It's interesting. A long time ago, not so long ago actually, in reference to discussing with her mother how often she and you speak, mommy. And the answer was basically when we need each other, or we need something from each other. Malki said to her mother, call Bobby more often. There's always something to talk about. If there's nothing, talk to Bobby about a topic she likes, like celiac, gluten-free stuff. Make conversation. She noticed everything. And by saying family, this extends to our family of friends, many we knew from before, some we got to know through this journey. All of them simple, Erdecha, Pusha, Eden, with warm Yiddish Ahatze, without a single judgment, judgmental bone in the body. People born without pointy fingers, no opinions, but always ready to lend their shoulder to lean on, and if possible, try to be a part of the solution. Hakudas Atoyv to Harav Hatzadik Chocham Vunav Moid, the Babi Fishov. For helping us understand things on, le- on a level unimaginable and taught us how to become selfless, pe- selfless people on a, level, on a level unfathomable beyond our wildest imagination. Your Madraiga of Mesidas Nefesh is simply unparalleled, something to be envied and striven to be emulated by all. Hakur is to the whole Elulian family, especially to Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Tzanchaya Elulian. For being as Malki described in her own words, my home away from home, for being available, accommodating, and helpful under the best and worst of times, literally 24-7, for giving Malki the feeling, again in Malki's own words, Chaya is my sister in Cali. And when asked about who took care of this or who took care of that, the response always was, who else? Yossi. A quid is a toy to the approximately 1,300 people around the world who came together, Ke'ish Echad, Belev Echad, opening their hearts and pockets to support the Yad Malki legacy, an organization founded by Nishmas Malki Le'eshulam for the purpose of bringing awareness and training to so many, so that Midah Keneged Midah Tikkunim will be as Hashem be achieved, all being part of causing Ke'ili Malki Chuzali Eschai Bo'elam Hakudas Atoyv to all those who have taken the initiative on their own to donate the Devudim Shepik Disha to various places in the Nishus Malki. Some that we know, the Kleinbards for the Sedidim in conjunction with your Simcha, the Schlesingers for the Atzkol Shasin, the Brazels for the Tefillin to the, to the Lulian Gem Center in California, and now for your new addition to Adonis Saifatoyda with the Yad, which you refer to as the Yad Malki. 
as well as for others, some of whom we don't even know. Hakudas Atoiv to the B'shem Foya Shlita for accepting the Shlichas of a full 12 months of saying Kaddish from Malkulei Yashulam and doing so with such amazing dedication. So to all those I mentioned above, to those I didn't mention, and in the spirit of Amispal Abad Chavaydoi, Nenet Chila, it being that we all want to be Zoycha, to see Nachas from our offspring, and be spared the Tzad Gidl Bunam, may Hashem be with you, may He guard and protect you and your entire family at Saf I would like to, I would also like to extend our tremendous Akudas Adoy for our Rav, for getting involved and making sure we do what Hashem wants us to do for our child. It's no secret that at least from a lay person's perspective, serious shyness seem to arise. Knowing the Rav's hectic schedule, it was really remarkable the countless hours the Ruf dedicated to get deep into the Sigya when I first approached him. Once in the Sigya, and being so well versed in such a wide range of aloha, he was always there to put us at ease with such pashtas, holding our hands and shaking psukim out of his sleeve, guiding us every step of the way so that we can do the will of Hashem as our tafkid required at that time and to make sure that we know that we are doing so according to Allah. Not only was it comforting, but at times mind-blowing. I hope the will forgive me for saying the following, but it's a lesson to be learned that the Torah is our guide for everything. I remember so vividly that Erev Pesach, when I asked about selling dog food, that was chumetz mamish, and the roof, after addressing the chumetz issue, and without batting an eye, asked, is it a male or a female? Do you intend to neuter or spay? When I responded, it's a female, the roof was relieved and expressed to me why, and then went on to tell me there are two ways to spay, and to let me know which one is nish oiz gehalten according to Aloha. I was speechless and so glad to have him as our Rav. So on behalf of my wife, myself, and Malki, I want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for being there for us. And yes, also for Malki, because I once repeated to her something you paskened, and she was so impressed at a later time, she once told me, as the Rav, see what he says. And, and as for Kudus Adoy for the Rabbi Shlita, I, I will start with a second reason, more of a practical one in nature, which the Rabbi gave us as the motivation for doing the Seifer Torah. The Rabbi sat next to me, speak to me 101, and said something to the effect of, the unfortunate tra tragedy cannot be undone. The pain cannot be taken away. Putting this behind you and moving on, well, that's almost impossible. This will change your perspective on mostly everything. It will take a certain space, and to a degree, you will be living within that space. Nonetheless, you have two choices as to how you will be living within that space, as even that space has two directions. One, not a very healthy one, is to sit in the corner think of the negative, and wallow. Two, keep on doing positive things related to and within that space, which will allow you to look forward towards positivity. He continued, the Yudzat in a year from now will not be an easy time. Doing the Seifer Torah will at least act as a cantilever of some sort. It will not be about trying to have you forget or getting you out of that space. That is not the task we are trying to achieve, but ra rather it is about allowing you to be in the space that you are, but in the most positive way possible, and having something to look forward to right within that space. And I can tell you that the devil is 100% right. Speaking earlier of mixed emotions, I can't even begin to explain the roller coaster ride of emotions leading up to the youth side and today. But one thing I must admit, the preparation for the Seifer was a continuous life preserver, something to hold on to 
every time the feeling of drowning and sorrow and pain came about. Where does all this quick thinking come from? How did they come up with this idea and so fast? For most, thinking and doing for others is a task, a job, a great avoider. However, however for the Deva, it's simply natural. It's his essence. He embodies the Amoida Chesed, the personification of selflessness. For those that knew the Deva Zechayin of Lucha, the Peshul Espinke, would probably say, what's the question? Blit is Nishkan Vaseh. And just like the Deva Zechayin of Lucha, who became one and the same, bound with another person's problems, as if it's his own, because it actually became its own. Sharing in the pain, sharing the suffering, sharing the worries, so too we see who have Zoichel Ben. So I would like to express a quiz to the Debesh Lita. You did Hashem, you did Nafshi, actually everyone she did, on behalf of my entire family and myself, not only for the singular undertaking of this Saifatoida, but even more so for just being there when we were completely lost. From physical arrangements to emotional support. And unlike as usual, when the seven days are over, everyone goes home as if everything is normal again. The Rebbe never left. The Rebbe didn't let go. The Rebbe never stopped calling. The Rebbe never stopped coming. He never stopped doing. I could have said not just for this year, but for all years past, especially the past seven years, being that extra right shoulder to lean on, those long phone conversations through many of those difficult nights, those calming words, helping to keep us sane through very troubled times. And of course, I could have said to the Boyan Shalom for giving us Malki, but also to you, Malki, for choosing us as your parents giving us this here to spend some very precious 20 years of our lives together with you. Time we would never exchange for anything in the world. For teaching us so much rachman, understanding, selflessness, patience, love without boundaries, and the list goes on. Now would probably be the appropriate moment I should be going on and on talking about you, Malki. But do I really need to? The world has spoken. The world has been shaken to its core by your untimely passing, with continuous seismic tremors still being felt today, so just as when you left. You have been and still are being spoken about, written about, even sung about. Your personality, your kindness, your smile, your giggle, your wit, support for others is missed by so many. As your parents, we always knew how special you are. But more importantly, we thought we knew everything about you and that we know more than anyone else. And to some degree, while trying to be realistic, we thought, what do parents really know? They only see good as they should. We are supposed to be biased that's how Hashem created us. Our view is most likely parentally skewed. Through the voluminous calls, texts, emails, and other communication means, we received from hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of people that knew you personally, whose lives you've positively impacted in so many ways, we have come to realize how little we really knew about you. So many knew so much more and have described your exemplifying selfless caring for them as well as for others, despite your personal feelings, personal pain, and personal suffering. They describe your constant encouragement, logic, deep-rooted spirituality, never stopping to look for the divine Shalom, continuously working to better yourself, leaving them with an everlasting impression from which they continuously draw on today. So if I do go on and on, all I would be doing is repeating what so many have already said, like the shamas in the shul to the chazan I previously mentioned. Malki, 
may it be that in the tzchus of what we are all as a community doing for your neshama now, and in turn, what you are doing for us now, by being an inspiration for so much good, your name now being synonymous for so much change, so that so many of your peers are being seen with an ayin toif and helped in ways never imagined before, be an aliyah for your precious neshama. May this all be as chuz gadol, so that your neshama will continue to rise until it will merit to reach the Kisaya Kovid, a place you so painstakingly strive for, so rightfully deserve, and will undoubtedly achieve. Our dear beloved Malki, when you get there, Hold on and don't let go. Use that access. Remind Hashem as the Yishtayim HaShav is and as you yourself know so well that all what is going on is purely symptomatic and not the real us, but rather the Kishi Agulis that is causing this turmoil. Tell the Dabayin Shaloydam that it's time. It's time Shayim and the Sani die. It's time for him to once again call out to the Makatrigam just as before with Shoyta Shabayalam Bakhiladatam of the Malkush, this time around don't accept the not right now for an answer. You were always there, tenaciously looking out for the little guy, as Rabbi Grosberg described you during the Shloshim your daily awe-inspiring visits to his office, always being a Melitza Yosha, advocating for others, while very few times, if ever, for yourself. Malkush, now is not the time to stop, but rather increase your tenacity. You now have unfettered access, so we ask you to be a Melitza Yosha for all of us. May we be continuously in the soda to practice the magic formula of Ahavas Chinam, which it, which is what's needed to be zoicha, to be as goyal tzedek, to chiyas emaisim, b'mhayde b'emaini.